drink beer, it's good for you. I'm empty handed and I'm feeling blue, and I'm gonna drink till the day that I die. Hello, and welcome to the video. In this video, I shall be sharing my super fast imperial stout recipe and method. It's fair to say that most of us enjoy a strong beer when we can get it. The problem is, is that you compare brewing something like this compared to a standard ordinary strength beer, then it adds more complications and time. Let's have a look at the differences there. Firstly, we have a longer brewing process. Generally this is because we need to use a reiterated mash to convert enough sugar to give us the desired alcohol strength, so essentially the mash will take you twice as long at least. Then we have a longer than normal fermentation due to the sheer amount of work the yeast has to do. Yeast health also needs to be especially high, which is where most new brewers fall down flat. Then we have a much longer conditioning process before the beer reaches its prime. For example, I'm only just thinking about bottling my last Imperial Stout brew, and that was brewed almost a year ago. I know some people drink them sooner, but I've learned over the decades that I've been brewing to be patient and get a much bigger reward at the end with strong beers. The methods that I'm sharing with you today look like this compared to a regular Imperial Stout brew. Firstly, we have a normal beer brew length, as there is no need for a second mash. Secondly, we have a much shorter fermentation. How does two to five days sound? Then even better, we have a far shorter conditioning process. Six months? No. Three months? No. Just one month and it peaks. You may be wondering at this point how all of this is possible. So before we move on to the recipe, I will discuss the two differences that make this totally possible. Firstly, in terms of the yeast used, you can forget any regular yeast. It just won't do this. To enjoy such a short fermentation and conditioning time, there is only one type of yeast that will do this, and it is known as quake. On this YouTube channel, you will find a series of videos that I have already made that are around Norwegian farmhouse ales. Kvake is a name for the yeast that is used with these, but it's great for brewing in general also, and I thoroughly recommend it. So check out that video series for more, and I also tell you exactly where you can actually obtain this yeast as well. Secondly, as you will see in the recipe, a portion of the fermentals in this recipe is made of sugar. There is a portion of the home brewing community that will turn their noses up at using sugars, claiming it is cheating or will give a lesser result compared to just using grain. Most of them would have never have tried it. But anyway, to them I will say just this. The result that you will get will be different, but it may well improve the beer for you in actual fact. The end result will be a beer that has less body than the one brewed with just grain. But because the majority of the fermentables will be grain, and because this wort will have some serious strength, this will certainly not impact the taste. The beer will simply have an approximate body of a beer that is of lesser alcohol, that has been mashed at the same temperatures. It will still be in keeping with many commercial imperial stouts, and the reason for that is quite simply because many of those are actually brewed using sugars as part of the fermentables as well. This is because breweries have regular taste testing sessions and often find that people in general do not like a strong beer with a very heavy body. And that's exactly what you're going to get when you do a strong beer of this type of just grain. You will note that I'm using dark candy sugar with this brew. This will also complement the taste of the beer very very nicely. That is not to say that you could not use other types of sugar and get a nice result. I just feel that this will give a better end result. If the cost of candy sugar is a factor, then it is actually very easy to make yourself with a few basic ingredients. I would make a guide 
to this and put it on YouTube, but there are so many on YouTube already that it seems pointless. OK, so let's take a look at the all-important recipe. I should point out that this recipe was shared with me courtesy of oldbrigging.no, a Norwegian homebrew supplier. They sell this kit for the market here in Norway. It has a great reputation and flavour. You will note the use of American hops and a nice balance of different malts. It has been very tried and tested and gets my seal of approval. This recipe is repeated in this video's YouTube description and is also shared on the Grainfarb Recipe Cloud for your convenient use with the Connect controller. Should you wish to brew a smaller amount than 20 litres, then please see my previous video on how to resize recipes using the Grainfarber Online Recipe Tools. Usually at this point in the video I will go through all aspects of the brew in some detail to reinforce the best methods. Because we are already past 6 minutes I will just focus on the important points in relation to this specific brew. You will note that in the recipe I have suggested a mash temperature of 67 degrees C or 153 degrees Fahrenheit. You may wish to adjust this temperature if you would prefer this beer with a different amount of body. At this temperature, as I suggest, the body will be on the medium side due to a portion of the fermentables being sugar and not grain. If you prefer your stouts on the heavier side, then you should adjust the mash step to between 69 to 70 degrees C or between 156 to 158 degrees Fahrenheit. Do keep in mind though that this will create a less fermentable wort and change the gravity numbers quoted in this recipe. So you're going to want to put them in the calculator yourself and do the math. When you get to the boil you will need to add in your sugars. This can be done any time from 30 minutes to lower times. Do keep in mind that the latest time to add this sugar would be at 5 minutes till the end of the boil. Adding the sugar at the latest time will give this brew much more flavour from the candy sugar. I added mine late because I love the extra flavours from this stuff. The important thing in adding these is to make sure that they do not burn on the bottom of your brewing system. Ensure the sugar is in small pieces before adding it and I would also highly recommend the flowing method. You will need to put your candy sugar into a bowl first and then using a ladle pour boiling hot wall over the top and then you just want to give this a general mix into the boiling wall just so that we can start this stuff actually dissolving before it hits the brewing system. You don't want to be stirring this for too long because of course you're losing temperature all the time but when you do add it into the brewing system you're going to need to continue stirring focusing on the bottom of the brewing system. You will notice that when I added this sugar in, I actually focused it on the opposite side of where our pump is. There's two reasons for this. Firstly, we don't want sugar entering the filter. It may not dissolve properly and could cause issues. Secondly, by keeping your sugar in one section of the system, it is actually easier to control and stir to avoid burning. Once you can feel with your spoon that all of the pieces of sugar are actually dissolved, then I suggest giving the whole thing a quick stir. You can then finalise this process by giving the middle plate a quick scrape, just in case. Proper preparation of a high gravity wort for your yeast to thrive in is an exceptionally important business, as we were certainly asking a lot from our yeast. It's essential to use yeast nutrients and give a heavier than usual focus on aeration of your wort. I usually aerate for around 5 minutes using the aeration attachment to a drill. In this case I doubled this time to 10 minutes. And you can see that there's an awful lot of aeration going into this one. I got a very respectable efficiency and specific gravity on this brew and it wasn't long before this one took off like a rocket. A great signal of a very healthy and happy yeast. I do hope you have become inspired to try this brew with the fake yeast and sugars as suggested. 
To my mind, one of the greatest things about beer brewing is the huge variety of different things to try. And brews like this and special yeast like Quake can really change the way that you brew for the future, opening new doors of discovery. I do hope that you have found this video interesting, useful and enjoyable. So if you did like this video, then please do like it on YouTube. This really helps me out and allows the videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. I have always got a lot of new videos planned for the future, so if you are interested in seeing my new content, then please subscribe for future content. If you have any questions on anything that I have covered in this video, or any other video, then please do not hesitate to get in touch with me via YouTube or Facebook. I'm a member of pretty much every Grainfather Facebook group and more. Happy brewing!